So I participated in this render challenge again hosted by the creative Sam on his YouTube channel. This time the theme was cosmetic render challenge. So in today's video I am going to show you how I made this cosmetic product animation in Blender. They can see me like Houdini in a bikini. It go poo. I go poo. Like Houdini, I go poo. I first started by collecting references from the internet for how the lipstick should look like in terms of texture and the modeling. Simultaneously, I was also looking for ideas for the animation. As always, I collect all my references into my pure ref file and the ideas I write them down in a word file. You can download pure ref from this website, link in the description. This time I took a different approach. Instead of finding the music at the end after completing the animation, I started looking for music before even starting the animation so I can plan my shots accordingly to the music. Using this approach has its own pros and cons. Like finding the right music beforehand, it's like choreographing a dance as you know how to choreograph the moves according to the beats. And it's same with the shots in the animation. You can direct the animation beforehand to the beats in the music and plan your shots accordingly. But there is also a downside to this approach. You feel constrained and are limited with the creativity in order to sync your shots with the music. But I went with this approach, started listening to the music which I found and cut down the best part of the song since the animation is supposed to be only 15 seconds. I found a part with the lots of beats and which could be suitable to fade out at the ending of the animation. After that, I noted all these beats in my word document that I created for noting down my ideas. As always, I create a folder structure format for my animations to keep things organized. If you want to use this folder structure, I have already made a video about this on my channel. You can check it out by clicking this i button or by clicking the link in the description. As always, I create a separate dot blend file for my 3D model. The 3D model provided was ok, so I had to texture it to make it look better. So according to the references I collected, I started texturing the 3D model. But one thing was missing, that was a brand name. And I didn't want to use any existing brands. So I created a pseudo brand name, which is Moon Mist. Now with the brand name, I also needed a logo. So I went into Photoshop and created this simple logo with Times New Roman as the font and duplicating the M which is the initial of the brand name and then adding a circle around it. In Blender I added a text and a circle and made this logo in 3D. I changed the lipstick's texture so you can see the node setup over here and I also added engraved logo on the lipstick and the cap by using a boolean modifier and as for the texture of the body of the lipstick you can see the node setup it has bumps and the noise texture it's not a complicated node setup i wanted to keep it simple this time i did not create a storyboard because i had it all visualized in my head so for the short one as always with most of my animations i use this cinematic light reveal animation which i already have a tutorial on you can watch that up over here by clicking on the i button or clicking on the link in the description. Basically, it's two lights in the back of the product shining on the edge of the product to create this suspense and a cinematic product reveal. For the shot too, I wanted a close-up shot of the logo on the top of the cap of the lipstick. So I set up a camera to track an empty and I am also using another empty for depth of field which is named as focus. The lighting setup is pretty normal with this HDRI that I downloaded from Polyheaven and the strength is set to this and there is a 3 point lighting setup with the key light as my main light and a fill light to remove those harsh shadows and a rim light and I also kept the animating lights from the previous shot and added a little bit of animation to the camera to move slowly. If you want a softer lighting on your products, I've already made a video on that. You can watch it by clicking on the i button or by clicking in the link in the description. For this shot, I wanted to show the brand name which is at the bottom right of the lipstick. Again, I'm using the MT to track the camera, the same lighting setup with the 3 point lighting and an extra rim light at the back and I'm keyframing the camera for a slow animation. In this shot, I have made a grid of this lipsticks. You can use an array modifier but in order to do that, I would have to join the mesh into a single object. So instead what I did was created an instance of the collection 
and then duplicated the instance. This way you will save up a lot on memory as it is just an instance and not an actual duplicate of the collection and then I arranged it in a grid form. And after that I added a camera animation moving left to right and then the center lipstick goes up in the air which is controlled by an empty. This will be used to transition to our next shot. This is one of my favorite shots that I worked on in this animation. I don't know much about clothes simulations but I followed this tutorial by Lewis Animation and that helped me a lot for this shot. Hello there. Link in the description for the tutorial. So to begin this shot the lipstick pops up in the frame from the bottom. So connecting it from the previous shot and after that the cap of the lipstick pops up and this is a trick that I found out recently which has been here this whole time which is using a mask modifier to mask the object. To do that add a mask modifier from the modifier tab and then go into weight paint mode and then add a weight paint to your object and when you slide your mask slider you can see the mask working in real time now. I keyframe this for the animation once the cap is about to disappear the cloth appears from the bottom. As you can see the cloth is being controlled by two empties by using a hook modifier and with the cloth simulation enable. This hooks give you control to move the cloth along the path you want. This curve here is only to visualize the path I want to animate the cloth along and it has nothing to do with the animation or simulation. So then I manually animated this hooks along the path and after lots of trial and error and baking the simulation over and over again, I finally had the simulation I wanted to make the lipstick disappear. I am using an instance of the collection. Since you can't apply viewport and render disabling option to the whole collection, you would have to apply to every object. So instead I am using an instance which also copies all the animation from the collection. Just disable the collection from the view layer so only the instance is visible. After that I find a frame where the cloth is covering the lipstick and then disable the lipstick in one frame from the render and viewport. So it looks like the lipstick is vanishing behind the cloth. And when the cloth moves over here I am using the text silky smooth which I converted into an object to apply the mask modifier. And then I am animating the mask according to the position of the cloth so that it reveals the text. For this shot I had to show that the lipstick is waterproof. At first I was going to use a particle system to display water droplets all over the lipstick. But then I found this tutorial, link is in the description, about using the shader editor to create a shader which could be even animated to show water drop effect on a surface. I used the same shader for this effect. The water drops were not visible from far away. So I decided to move the camera a little bit closer to the lipstick and then animate it to go back and then reveal this text which says waterproof. Time was running out for the deadline and there was a little time remaining in the animation too. I had already used like 10 seconds out of the 15 seconds for the animation. So I cramped up all the shots in the remaining seconds left for this animation. I wanted to display different colors for this shot. What I am doing over here is duplicating the lipstick and changing the color of the lipstick. I found some names online for the lipstick colors. Then I added a text field and parented all the lipstick to the text and then I rotated the text setting the origin point at the right side. And then once the text and the lipstick is out of the frame, again I disable it in the viewport and render by keyframing it. Then once again another text field with lipstick comes in from the same position and then which is being enabled and I repeated this process for all the different colors shown in the animation. There was still one shot remaining for the animation to complete. I personally wanted to show the features of the lipstick as a product. I wanted to show the long lasting effect of the lipstick but I didn't know exactly how. So when I was going to sleep I had this idea of showing a clock made out of lipstick itself in roman numerals and the second hand is made out of lipstick but the hour hand and the minute hand is made up of two words long and lasting. So I went to sleep and the other day I immediately started working on this. Again I am using instances for the lipstick itself to not to make the scene heavy and run out of memory. After I arranged all the lipstick in roman numerals along a circle and added a second hand and after that I added two text long and lasting and made them the minute hand and the hour hand. After that I animated those hands to move around the clock and then stop with the word long at the left side and lasting on the right side and the second hand at the top which shows you the long lasting effect of the lipstick. 
and then I wanted to end with the logo at the end of the animation. So what I did was keyframe the camera to zoom into the logo and that's where the animation would stop. This time instead of rendering the entire shot, I first rendered the viewport animation which you can do by simply going to the view and then viewport render animation. Make sure in the file format it is ffmpeg video and it would save to the directory you have mentioned. This acts like a preview which helps you a lot to make some decisions. This way you can see the animation speed in real time, if it is up to the pace and is it syncing with the music perfectly or not. I would personally suggest you to preview your shots before finally rendering them out. This would save a lot of render time and prevent from mistakes that would have happened in the first place. Now for the compositing again, I am using DaVinci Resolve as it is free. Link is in the description. I just did some basic color grading for the shot. They were looking a little bit dull. So I color boosted them and added a bit of saturation and adjusted some curves and added a glow effects. Here you can see the before and after, how it looks after the color grading and effects. I didn't do much in compositing this time as the shots were perfectly in sync with the music because that's what I had planned beforehand and really helped me save a lot of time. This would be my advice to you guys also that plan ahead your shots beforehand because if you do this step right, you wouldn't have to waste a lot of time editing those animations and going through several problems in the post-production step. The only thing I did here was the shot does not sync with the beat of the music. So I cut this shot here where the beat appears and then zoomed a little bit on it and when the beat disappears it goes back to its normal position. And at the end of the animation after the logo there are several beats in this music. So what I did was utilize it to my benefit by adding some text with different color palettes and when the beat appears it changes to a different color and that's how I ended the animation. For the sound effects, I didn't add much this time because the music itself was great. It had a lots of beats and even if I had added sound effects, the music was too loud that you couldn't even hear the sound effects. Over here, I added some swoosh sound effect. As usual, I am using Soundly, the free version for sound effects. Link is in the description. Then I added some cloth sound effects for this shot and I did a little trick over here. As you can see the cloth moves from left to the right. So to imitate that in the form of sound, I pan the audio from right to left by keyframing it in the inspector tab in DaVinci Resolve. So when the cloth moves to the right, you can hear the audio from your right side. And while it moves to the left side, you can hear the audio shifting from right to left side. It kind of gives an immersive effect. Well, this only works great if you are wearing an earphone. Then I added this water dropping effect for the waterproof shot and for the long lasting shot I added a clock ticking sound effect. That's it for the sound effects for this animation. Well if you have come this far then thank you for watching this video. I hope you like it and gain some knowledge and hopefully you use some of these techniques in your workflow. Also let me know in the comments below what more videos you would like to see on this channel in the future and also is there any feedback for these videos you would like to give. Please comment them as well. We have reached over 300 subscribers. Thank you for your support. It means a lot.